Hi there, I'm Michael Ralph. Today we're going to be making some auger plates. You're going to need everything you see right here. Most importantly, some LB auger broth base. You're going to need an Erlmeyer flask of some size, some petri dishes, DI water, and some sort of heat source. The first thing to do is figure out what kind of LB base you're going to be mixing with. Many of them have directions right on the label, like mine says 25 grams per liter of water, but yours may be different, so make sure you read the documentation that came with your materials. If you don't have a premixed base, you could also use a minimal media formula like this one. Go ahead and just pause the video, you can get that recipe from me. Next up, you're going to need to mix this with some water. Erlmeyer flasks are important because in the heating step, the shape of the flask is going to make the heating process much easier. So make sure you're using an Erlmeyer flask, and the size depends on how much you plan on mixing. You could use something as big as a 1 liter flask, 500 mils, or any other size. Remember to scale your recipe for the appropriate size. So 25 grams for the liter, 12.5, 6.25, and again, remember that the recipe may be specific to the dry product that you're using. Once it's mixed, you're going to notice that the broth doesn't dissolve all the way. So you're going to need to heat it using preferably a microwave, but you could also use a hot plate to heat it up and get all of it dissolved. The heating step is particularly dangerous because you may see some boil up and some spillage if you're not paying attention. So make sure you babysit that flask as it heats so that once it's fully dissolved, it doesn't go ahead and boil over. Once you're finished with the dissolving, you're most likely going to want to sterilize your solution. So take your flask and you'll want to autoclave the solution. This step is optional. To a certain degree, the microwaving will minimize your contamination, but to be particularly thorough, you may want to autoclave. Remember to talk to somebody who's already familiar with autoclaving before you try and autoclave by yourself. They can be particularly dangerous. Once it's sterilized, you're ready to go ahead and pour your plates. You're going to need to move quickly because the auger will solidify once it cools down to room temperature. So while it's still hot, you're going to want gloves. You're ready to pour in each consecutive plate. Here you can see I've got a stack of plates. Remember that you've got the small side, the side that nests within the other one on the bottom. That's the bottom of your plate. Stack them all the same direction. You can just go one at a time in a very methodical way. So lift it up, pour, pour about halfway full and then replace the lid and just move one up in your stack. Pour, replace the lid, pour, replace the lid. The best technique is going to keep your stack small enough that you can lift without exposing the top to air, but some of that's going to depend on how good you are with your microbiology technique. Once you've got them all done, you can let them cool. You will want some masking tape to tape them closed to ensure that they don't get contaminated while you're preparing them for your lab. And remember to label all of your plates with the type of broth you're using, and once they're inoculated, label them with whatever they've been inoculated with. Good luck.